People in Taiwan woke up to the strongest earthquake there in 25 years. The magnitude 7.2 quake struck off the east coast. Aftershocks rattled communities across the self-ruled island, causing power cuts and some buildings to collapse. Text messages warned coastal areas of the tsunami threat. It was very strong. It felt as if a house was going to topple. It was shaking very violently. All the motorcycles outside our house toppled over, so I quickly switched off the gas and the electrical source. When I realized it was an earthquake, I quickly put on my clothes and shoes. Then I dragged the kid with me and ran down the stairs. Officials in the capital, Taipei, said it was the strongest earthquake to hit Taiwan and offshore islands since 1999, when a 7.6 magnitude quake, the worst natural disaster in the island's history, killed an estimated 2,400 people. More strong aftershocks are expected in coming days. We have already seen reports of houses tilting, roads damaged, and many vehicles hit by falling rocks in Hualien area. In the Taipei area, the metro and the high-speed trains were suspended. I would like to request the relevant department to grasp the golden time for rescue, actively carry out search and rescue work for the people, take the best care of injured people, and take emergency resettlement measures. Japan and the Philippines were also on tsunami alert. Japan's national broadcaster warning viewers to evacuate their homes. Okinawa's main airport temporarily suspending all flights, but the tsunami warnings have since been lifted. The region is no stranger to highly destructive seismic events. In 2011, Japan suffered its biggest earthquake on record. A massive 9.0 magnitude undersea jolt triggered a tsunami that left around 18,500 people dead or missing. It also caused the Fukushima nuclear power plant disaster, the most serious accident since Chernobyl. And a 7.5 magnitude earthquake on New Year's Day this year hit Japan's Noda Peninsula, killing more than 230 people. Zain Basravi, Al Jazeera. Well, for more on this earthquake in, Pas in uh, uh, Taiwan, let's speak to Adam Pascal, who's the chief scientist at the privately owned earthquake observatory seismology research center. He's live from Melbourne in Australia. Thank you very much for being with us. So Taiwan uh, is regularly rocked by these earthquakes because of its location on the Pacific Ring of, of Fire. But this was a very powerful earthquake that was felt across the island. What does the early data indicate uh, in terms of severity and its impact? Certainly it is, as you mentioned, the largest earthquake in, in 25 years in, in Taiwan uh, at 7.4. And being so close to uh, a large city of Hualien, uh, it, the, the impacts are going to be much more severe, particularly how uh, relatively shallow the earthquake was as well. So a shallow earthquake, was the early warning system effective, you think? So far we're seeing a death toll of seven. Is that likely to change? I, I imagine uh, that may increase as uh, more people are discovered uh, missing or trapped um, and potentially uh, may lose their lives. But the uh, earthquake uh, early warning system, the, the alerts did uh, get raised, but um, from what I'm hearing, uh, the text messaging to the basically the entire country, uh, the coverage was spotty. So I don't think it, it sounds like not everyone got that message. Uh, but the broadcast over the uh, radio and uh, television systems seemed to get out pretty quickly. Mm. Tell us a bit more about the specific uh, ring of fire that uh, Taiwan uh, lies on and, and you know, the reason that these earthquakes happen frequently in that region of the world. It is a very complicated tectonic setting uh, where, where uh, Taiwan is. So the, the Philippine Sea uh, has a little plate of its own that is sort of adjoining uh, part of the uh, the Pacific plate as well as on the edge of the Pacific plate. So there's a, a couple of plates joining together at that point where it's, uh, the Eurasian plate and the Philippine Sea plate are colliding. So there is quite a lot of uh, earthquake activity in that region and you can get those very large earthquakes, you know, magnitude seven and eight uh, events in that area. And uh, I think the largest on record in, in that region was an 8.2 back in 1920. So um, they have had large earthquakes like this before, but just not for a long time. Right. The full ex extent of this uh, earthquake, the damage is still being assessed in Taiwan with, with road and, and rail closures limiting access to the epicenter, uh, Hualien County, which is, I understand, an isolated uh, area. The aftershocks, how long can we expect those to continue and how powerful will they continue to be? 
We've already seen a magnitude 6.5 aftershock only shortly after uh, the main shock, and there have been dozens of magnitude 5 uh, events uh, in the in the hours since. We, you would expect to, for those aftershocks to continue for some time, uh, some weeks, months, uh, to the point where they would be felt. Um, there's always a possibility of larger events. Um, it's, it reduces as time goes on, but uh, you can't ever rule out the fact that this uh, may may have another large event in the sequence, um, which would also make it difficult for uh, search and rescue operations as well, because every aftershock can shake uh, already weakened infrastructure. So uh, it is certainly a concern. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you for your insight. Adam Pascal, the chief scientist at the privately owned Earthquake Observatory Seismology Research Centre, live there in Melbourne. Thank you for your time. You're welcome.